Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Power Hub Saturday episode two. And our topic for today is overview of AI visual in Power BI. So technically today, welcome to our Power Hub Saturday episode two. If, for those that joined us last month, we really appreciate you for joining us. And as we have promised you that we'll be bringing interesting speakers and interesting topic for you on Power Hub Saturday, every uh, let me just say twice in a month so this month we are here with uh, the great speaker from auckland in fact i will introduce her very soon but let me just talk about the host of this event so the host of this event is the nigeria power platform or your user group so this is a power platform user group of nigeria and then we normally host our meetup twice in a month which is called power up saturday and we also host analytic made simple every last Saturday of the month. So this month, like I said, we we'll bring in to you Leila Etati. She's a speaker, let me say greatest speaker. She, in fact, she'll introduce herself very soon. She's uh, that powerful blogger for Radakak. In fact, I always follow her blog. I follow her videos on YouTube and the likes, and we are very, very happy for having Leila on these shows today. So I'll be introducing Leila to you very soon. So today, like I said, the topic is overview of AI visuals in Power BI. As we all know that AI is very, very interesting. AI is something artificial, artificial intelligence is even taking over the world right now. There are so many things you do manually, but with AI, you can easily do them automatically without stress. So Leila is going to explain all those processes for us in a very seamless way in Power BI how you can improve your reporting, your automation, your dashboard with artificial intelligence in Power BI. So this is myself, Adewale Yusuf. I'm a business intelligence analyst and trainer at D Brown Consulting. I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer. I lead the Nigeria Power Platform or your state user group. And I also a moderate and host MCT West Africa virtual series. So this is my Twitter handle, my YouTube channel, and my LinkedIn profile. So you can connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube. So today I would like to bring up Laila. So hi Laila, are you there? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. Hi, yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us uh, on this section today. We really appreciate you and we are really very, very happy. So can you just say hi to our people and introduce yourself maybe in, the, in a very short form? Sure, I'm going to share my screen just a minute. So, yeah. So, thanks so much. It's great. It's my first time I'm presenting uh, in the uh, actually in Nigeria Power User Group. Thanks so much for the opportunity. I never get a chance to speak so thanks for that uh, so as uh, actually mentioned i'm leila based in auckland new zealand uh we are in kind of the close to australia and now it's about 11 pm there 11 pm uh saturday so kind of i think we have about a couple of hours difference so i'm working radicat with reza rad maybe you heard about him in from radicat i'm also ai and data platform mvp means that i work in both area uh, i'm interested in ai and i explore it ai inside power bi power apps uh, SQL and Azure. So uh, that's why that I'm speaking in different conferences and also writing a couple of books on these topics. And uh, also I'm also running a couple of uh, user group in Oakland, one Power BI, another one is AI. And yeah, I'm really passionate about what Microsoft did in AI here. Cool. So uh, as uh, actually is mentioned, I'm going to talk about AI visual. So uh, as you see, I don't use the power uh, uh, kind of the PowerPoint. I use the Power BI for my presentation and I find it really cool. So uh, before I'm going ahead, I create a visual myself that actually shows what features we have. This visual that I created is about back to the uh, kind of the December last year. Some changes happened, but these are the overview of the AI and machine learning tools that we have in Power BI. So before I'm going to show the AI visual in Power BI, first have a look to what we have. 
So you know that in Power BI desktop, we have power, uh, in Power BI, we have Power BI desktop and Power BI service. So in Power BI desktop, we have visualization. We can visualize. We can transform the data that we have Power Query. And also uh, inside the Power BI service, uh, we have also data flow. We have dashboard and the other things. So AI exists. AI features and machine learning features exist in three different area in visualization that I'm going to talk about that in Power Query and also in data flow. So just have an overview of what we have. So for the visualization, uh, we're able to write R and Python inside there. So this is not a new one. We have it from uh, 2015, the time actually that Power BI desktop is created. So we have that one. So as you see, I put a uh, kind of the three people means it's kind of uh, if you have a pro license, you can uh, kind of publish your R and Python visual to the personal gateway and is available for everyone. So it's not kind of the kind of uh, is also a general available for everyone. It's not a premium feature. Uh, the other one that today I'm going to talk about is key influencer visual. This one also is kind of available and you can use it in Power BI desktop. We have Q&A visual going to look at that. Uh, we have decomposition tree again is available now that time was kind of uh, coming soon, but now I can say this general available to everyone. And also be able to create custom visual with R and JSON. That's also possible from 2016, 2017, that actually you can create custom visual. So normally we create custom visual with .NET or recently we can create with Charticulator. I have a session on that, but there is a possibility to create custom visual with R and JSON. So you can see that that actually these features that we have in visualization can be used by analysts, by business intelligence, and even by data scientists. So it's actually you can see that how they can benefit from that. Another set of the AI and ML tools that we have that I'm not going to cover in this session. I'm just going to have an hour beyond that. It's about in data transformation in Power BI desktop. That is Power Query. And we are going to see that how we can do that. So uh, one is about the uh, kind of inside the uh, cognitive services and using the M and Power Query. So you know that in Power Query we have a language name M. So that's behind the, all of the menu things. There's a language that is M language and you can do whatever you want. So you can call a web service through that. So uh, Microsoft has a pre-built AI tools named cognitive services that you're able to call that one inside M. So there are lots of interesting things you can do that. Uh, you can create a web service inside Azure Machine Learning Study or Azure Machine Learning Services and then call them inside Power Query. That's another one. Uh, also, there is a, uh, another interesting feature for the premium user that actually now is available. It's not coming soon anymore. It's available now. Then you can apply some text analytics like keyword extraction, language detection, and also um, um, sentiment analysis without writing any code. So there are different things there. And also you can, again, run R and Python inside Power Query for data transformation. That's also a really good one. And the last part that's back to the Power BI service inside Dataflow. For people who may don't know what is Dataflow, Dataflow is actually, I can say, it's a Power Query inside Power BI service. It's actually you can get data from different resources, do the, some data transformation, and then load it there. So uh, inside that, for the premium user, for the uh, premium, we have pro and premium users. So for the premium account, we have some uh, no code, low code, actually I can say no code approaches to do the machine learning, uh, automated ML, call some cognitive services like image tagging, text analytics, and also bringing your code over there. So that's also really interesting. So you see that how many features we have now in Power BI. So explaining all of them is actually each of them needs a separate at least one hour or 30 minutes talk. Uh, for this session, I'm going to talk about the visualization. So I'm going here, just uh, remove that one that I have. 
I have a data set uh, that I can share it also later uh, about the customer. So I have a data set about customer. Let me also uh, zoom it so you can see that one. So uh, I have a data set about customer who actually uh, we have some like how many months they are with us, uh, how many tickets they actually issue ticket means how much for example if they are not satisfied they uh, raise the issue ticket and then we respond to them they have different role in organization they have a specification like company size and we are going to see that uh, so they rate us high and low we want to see that what measure like for example if they are coming from specific company size or if they have a specific role in organization or uh, maybe they uh, issue many tickets which of these has impact that people rate us high or low so we are going to see the effect of the other features on the rating so to do that if you back to the visual area under the visualization panel, uh, we have a, a visualization named key influencers. So key influencers is actually the visual that behind the scene use decision tree algorithm and regression algorithm to help us. I'm just going to click on that. Uh, and note that you see that there is a lamp here. All of the visual that AI team in Power BI created, they have a lamp here, means it has inside. So uh, if you see that lamp, that means that is the AI visual in Power BI. You will see that if I call the decomposition tree, you will see that is actually also the same. So here is actually that one. I'm going to work with that as you see here. We have the area to analyze, so I'm going to analyze the rating of the people. So I click on that to analyze, just make sure it's not summarized. I'm going to see that how ticket count, uh, the number of the months that people stay with me, and they role in organization, and also the uh, this is another one, the team. That means that what's the nature of their actually call is impact. Also, just make sure they are not summarized because it's impact on the uh, actually what. So just make sure that. So it gave me a visual like this. So as you see that at the top, we have two tab, key influencers and top segment for the key influencers you will see that we have a drop down that shows that we are going to find the key influencer for the situation that the rating is high or when the rating is low so i choose the high that means that the key influencer people actually rate us high i want to see what's impact them so the first thing that you see is give me some rules. These are the rules that based on the decision tree algorithm behind the scene is gave to me. So uh, you see that it's fine ticket count. So if ticket counts going down, that means that number of the people who issue ticket, for example, uh, they the service not working, the, uh, the staff was not really friendly. These are for each item people can uh, create a ticket imagine that if the number of the ticket going down people are more satisfied about us you can see the statement here a ticket count decrease the likelihood of rating high is increase for example a fall of uh, about 2.68 just take it a bit here um uh, is leads to about 5.5 uh, 5, uh, actually increase in the uh, proximity that people are rating us. You can see the chart here. You see that the, actually the rating percentage high and the number of the tickets. So as you see that, if the number of the ticket increase, the chance that people rate us high also uh, actually is decreases. Is they have a vice versa relationship. So the first important thing to people rate us uh, high is ticket count. In the second one is uh, tenure. Tenure has impact, but you see that it's not that much. It's just 1.1. It still is better than the others, but it's not a really great influencer. But still, you can see that. Uh, there is a, a difference between these two. 
just want to back to the data. I'm going to see what is the ticket count and what is the tenure. So if you go look at the ticket count, if you look at the numbers, it can be between zero to nine is a numeric value. The same for the tenures. Tenure also is a numeric value, so it can be between zero to whatever. But you can see that in the visualization for the ticket count, we have a kind of the line chart here and the ticket count is numeric here. But for the tenure, it's actually it's become categorized. It's not anymore uh, actually a uh, It's not anymore a uh, kind of the uh, a line one is categorized. The you didn't do that. You didn't coming and actually categorize the data. What is happened? So behind the scene, the algorithm is going to find first the linear relationship between the rating and also the ticket count. So it's find it, it's create that. But for the tenure at the start, it couldn't find that. So, uh, so it couldn't find a linear relationship. So what is done is going to group your uh, actually data. So you see that we have a group for zero or less for the tenure. We have a group between zero to 29, 29 to 58 and more than that. So this is categorized, is not created by you. The system behind the scene actually create that one. Uh, if you're not happy about this categorization, you can create your own and then bring the data over here. The kind of the uh, one that we have here, you can change it to the low to see the different ones. So for low, again, ticket count has impact. Again, tenure is important, but the number is a bit different. Uh, here, uh, if you uh, if you look at here, we have a top segment. The second tab that we have is top segment. It's going to classify the data based on that. So you see that we have a segment that actually include uh, 5,737 case of the data. In the second segment, we have that one. And in the first segment, about 99 percentage of the data of these 5,000 people are rate us Hi, so this is a segment that people are really happy about our product. Let's check it out what we have here. So in this segment that about 5000 of the data and you see that if the role is uh, organization and the ticket count is less than um, actually one or equal to one, there is a chance that actually people rate us high. So 99 percentage of that 5000 uh, and 700 rows people rate us uh, actually high. You can see that the overall is 88, but in that segment we have 99 percent and you can see this is only 5700 rows of the data. That is 12 percent of the data. There is another segment that segment two that actually include about 5000 rows of the data and you see that again the role in organization uh, ticket count um, between actually four and one and still they rate us high. So that's a different. To be honest, for the top segment can be sometimes a bit misguiding for the user. So normally what I'm doing actually, I'm going to the setting here and under the analyze, I always kind of disable that one if I find that the uh, user is not really kind of comfortable with that. So you see that you couldn't see that one. So if you think that you don't need the segmentation because it's sometimes hard to explain, you can just eliminate that one. Another thing that we have here is analyze type. So here, because the data is categorical, we said that people rating us high or low, so it's categorical variable. But in some scenario, like host price or the sale amount, the data is not categorical. The data is actually a value. So that's become changed. We will see that. Also, we have another features name enable count that actually shows the different scenario. So what is that actually? So enable count. So when I actually disable and again enable one, you see that there is a line 
coming over here. So what is that actually? Uh, when we don't have that line, uh, that means that generally uh, ticket can't actually impact. But this line, what is this line saying? This line actually is saying that how many percentage of the data is actually follow that rule? You have a rule, you know that, for example, uh, in 10 percentage of your data, for example, ticket count has 90 percent impact. But this is just 10 percent. Sometimes if the rule is really high, but it should apply in whole of your data. So to do that, you see that if I just browse down. You see that we have the option to sort by impact. So impact means the one that we have or sort by count. So now if I sort it by count, you see that it's changed. No tenure has more impact than ticket count. They don't have that much different in their scenario. The ticket count is 88.29%, uh, while the tenure has about, let me just bring it here. Uh, I think is less than that. So uh, let me just yeah, it's about 88.07, so just very, just 20 or 30 uh, point person. It's not that much difference between them. But uh, so I can say that again, if I sort by by the impact, I can say the ticket count has the impact as a rule and also it apply in majority of the data because of ticket count. So I really like that enable count is combination of the impact and count can be really important because we know this rule is applied, but we want the rule that apply to the majority of the data. So it's good point to have that one. So this is a, actually apply it based on the uh, actually based on the category of variable. I'm going to bring another data set here that I think it should be also a CSV file. That's about the house price. I'm going to create a new one based on the house price. Just load it. That's a house price based on US. So all of the data is on US. I'm just going to write it uh, key influencer. I'm going to create a new one and I change it again. Key influencer. Key influencer is based on the numeric value. So I'm going to enable that one again. And I'm going to uh, bring the data for that one. So for the house price, what I'm going to so see, it has lots of things. Let me show you in the data here. Going to the house price. Under the host price, if I just go to the end, we have the column name sale price. So I want to see that what attribute like uh, the loss area, like the quality of the house or whatever, or the yield build has impact on the sales price. So sales price is a numeric value. It's a different analyst. This one is actually again use the decision tree and linear regression, but for the numeric value. So I'm back to the design here. So just put the sale price as an analyst and I make sure it's not summarized. Yep. And I'm going to just put some of the things like uh, some of them that are obvious. Uh, like lottery. <clears throat> also. Year build. Don't summarize. Don't summarize and also overall quality. I'm not going to consider everything, just some of the important one. Again, don't summarize. So here, uh, the one that I before I'm going to explain the chart, if I back to the specification, you will see that under the analyst, uh, now we have categorical and continuous one. The one that I have is continuous. Let me change it to the categorical to see what will happen. If I change it, I get an error at the top that telling me sales price is not a 
uh, is more than 10 unique value. So that's a hint actually. That means that if you want to analyze a, a, a category or one, it should be less than 10. If it's more than 10, you need to switch to the continuous one. That means that the classification algorithm behind that is couldn't analyze more than 10 unique value. And because this data that is a sales price is more than 10 unique value, I need to change it from category all to the continuous. That actually makes sense. So that's a one. That's a difference that we have here. Another difference that we have uh, in the previous one, if you remember, if I back to show to you in the previous one, I have the uh, actually what is influence rating to be high and low. High and low is come from my data set. So it shows the, that different possibilities we have there. But when I come to the key influencer here, you just see that it just said increase or decrease because it's a numeric value. So there is no more specific value. So we can analyze that if the sales price increase, what actually attribute, what of these attribute will impact. So what is found from decision tree rules is that lottery has more impact on that. It's actually increased the sales price by $70,000. In the second place is overall quality and the year build has an impact on that. Again, you will see that, for example, lottery is not a category or variable in my data set. Again, because it couldn't find a linear relationship between the lottery and the sales price, uh, algorithm behind the scene uh, kind of converted my data to the group value and analyzed based on that. The rest is the same as the other one. Uh, the rest is actually, uh, if you're going there, you can uh, enable the count and see that which one has more impact. For example, you can see that uh, lottery has more impact, but you see that it just cover, I think it's a very low amount of the data, just maybe 60% or something. Yeah, 30%. Yes, it's impact a lot on the sales price, but it just include 31% of the data. But for the overall quality, if I hover my mouse, you will see that it actually it has more impact, uh, more is include more data. Just let me see that. You see it actually include 100% of the data was impacted by overall quality. So maybe this one is better. There is a, uh, another attribute we have here. You may see that expand by. It's used for a specific scenario. So the data that I have here is actually for the each house. Actually, you will see that if I go to the end, I have ID of the house. So the granularity that I have is based on the house. Sometimes you want to analyze it not based on the each house. You want to look at the suburb. You want to have an aggregation. You have to uh, hire granularity in your data. OK, so what we are going to do, you can back here. And for example, I want to analyze it based on the neighbor. So I just expand by the neighbor. And here I'm set that based on the average of the sales price. So here what I did actually, I don't want to analyze each house by itself. I want to analyze based on the neighborhoods. So I choose the expand by by neighborhoods or it can be country or city. And then because it's aggregation tools, I need to choose average or some, some aggregation function. So I have a different analysis. So this analysis is totally different from what I did uh, actually there. So this analysis is actually going to shows that uh, how the based on the uh, each suburb how is impact. So it's, this one maybe not really uh, used by everyone, but if you want to do aggregation, that's a really. So again, we have top segment here and just let me make sure that I explain. I think I kind of explain the rest is just about the visualization thing. And uh, this one is kind of general available, so it's not any more premium. You can use it over there. Also, I can share the file after the session, so if everyone wants to look at 
that's one they can do that so there are some uh, actually i have some blog posts on these visual that i can share with you uh, another one that i'm going to talk about uh, is decomposition tree so before i'm going to that i'm just going to define to the option and setting to the option this is my april one i didn't actually <laughs> update that one yet so some of them is there so if you have an older one like me i use this computer the april one so you may have to go to the file to the option and setting and under the preview decomposition tree i think so in the new version is not uh, any more preview is kind of available so but in this version you need to actually go to the preview feature and make the decomposition tree available i'm just going to do that when doing that, because the preview, you need to open and uh, you need to close your Power BI. So I just save it again and I'm going to close it and open it again. Just take any question about the COVID, uh, about the key influencer. Any question? Yeah, so Leila, question after the U session. So people will be dropping that question, then after the section, we'll take the whole question. Okay, sure. Okay, so I just open that one. So I'm going to talk about another one, that decomposition tree. As the name said, it's going to decompose the data. So we are going to see that how it actually works. And also we are going to look at the Q&A visual later. Just open it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be interesting. I'm sure a lot of people are waiting already. Okay. So okay. now again. So, yeah. Send it back to live. All good? Yeah, we're good. Awesome. So here you see that noise available. I'm going to click on that. Again, you will see that there's a lamp here. Again, you see that the like a key influencer visual, we have a lamp here. So uh, actually, a Power BI AI team in Power BI, they start to create these type of visuals that easy to understand for everyone. And but behind the scene, lots of machine learning algorithm there, and the, you can differentiate them with the lamp that they put actually beside that. So what we have here again, we have a analyze and we have explain. We don't have expand here, and we have a tooltip. So you can. Imagine that what we have here. I'm going to use the sales price, whole sales price for that one. I'm going to analyze that one. Just going to drag and drop here. I'm just going to make sure. Yep. Is kind of the. Yep, summarize of that. And I'm going to put the same thing. Yeah, like year build. Um, the overall quality that we have or overall condition, they are can be the same thing. And also the lot area, for example, again. Just make sure. Yep. OK, so as you see that we have the average of that, so you can expand and kind of decompose your data uh, in kind of the two different ways. One is actually just normal decomposition without any AI. So you see that there is a lamp here. So you see high value and low, low value is actually this one. You kind of similar to the key influencer going to find that which one has more impact. But if you don't want to use it, just you can you want to categorize your data based on just year build or overall you can do that. So first I'm going to the simple one. I'm going to decompose my data based on the year. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, is actually for the each year we have that one. So you can see that is actually how it look like. So these are the data that I have. I can go up and check the data over. Here, so for the average of the sales price in each year. Also, I can again close it and said so I want to check it based on overall quality. So in overall quality, you can see the average. So if you just sum up all of these value, it should be same as the same price. So sum of all of these value is equal to this 
one. So for example, for overall seven quality, uh, the it has more sales price, uh, but for example, nine is in the middle. So people kind of into the uh, average of the sales price when the quality is good. So it's not, they are not going to look at very kind of to be very great, like to be have eight or nine. You see that nine is in middle. And also, of course, people are not going to look at the overall quality when it's one. So you can see how the composition of the sales price can happen. You can, for example, if you're interested in number seven, you want to decompose it based on the year. You want to see that, okay, people are interested in quality seven. I want to see that how it's happened during different Yes, so you can actually do that or you can kind of doing that. This is a one way. This is a simple decomposition. It's not any AI on that. It's just going to divide data based on different. But sometimes you want to have more kind of uh, intelligence to decomposition. You want to see that which one of these three value has more impact on the sales price. So I'm going to the high value. So you will see that the overall quality has more impact. That says that the recommended high value isn't currently, uh, so for example, if I choose this one, is actually uh, can show you that which one has more impact. So kind of overall quality has more impact. Now I want to see that again, what, which one has more impact. After for the, when the overall quality is seven, the year bill has more impact so it's kind of the again using a decision tree behind the scene to find that one so you see that you're able to decompose your data based on the specific value or based on the uh, actually algorithm uh, on the behind the scene so similar this part is so similar to key influencer and this one is so similar to what we have in the previous visual decomposition tree and the last visual that i'm going to talk about Many of you know about that q and A. I'm, I'm sure that many of you heard about that. So if you remember, we can double click here and start to ask question. For example, we said that show me uh, sales uh, price by uh, neighborhood. And it actually gives us something. So we can actually write a uh, actually sentence here as I, and give us a uh, actually visual. You see that I said that I want to show me the sales price or for example, average sales price. So this I can say I want to see the average of the sales price by each neighborhood and I'm happy I want to make it as a visual so I can have it. This is not a new one. We have we have that one behind the scene. Yes, it used natural language processing behind the scene for the typing that you have here, but uh, it's not that uh, actually by itself. There is a problem. For example, I want to say that show me uh, Royal uh, customer ID. You see that is actually tell me that, hey, what you mean about Royal? I don't have any definition about Royal. So I said, okay, I can teach you what is Royal mean. So to do that, I'm going through the setting. So what is actually shows me here, it just shows me the customer ID, which is not enough. So I click on the setting here. And is navigate me to the new area that I can teach. So I can teach Q&A about the Royal. So I can say, yep, I want to submit that one. And customer ID has Royal. So for example, um, let me define a measure and then back here. So I'm going to the customer table, for example, here. I define a measure. And you actually, I'm going to create a new measure here. I'm just going to the, not the quick measure, just a simple measure. So I said I define a average ticket count, for example. I said average.
ticket count. So I just define a measure. Then again, I'm back here. Going to the teach Q&A. Submit that one. And I'm saying that a customer is royal. That, for example, the, uh, the average ticket counting, for example, is less than one, for example. And that means that actually I define the royal customer. So if you look at here, you will see you couldn't see customer zero, one, and two. So I define the adjective for a specific column. Co a customer ID was a column, but when I call the royal and add it, kind of put a uh, uh, defined it here, I said that, okay, uh, royal means when a customer ID that the average ticket count is less than one. So I'm going to define, put a, a definition for the customer ID to introduce that. I said, yep, I'm happy with that. Now, uh, just save it. Uh, say yes. So now you see that the royal is just going to change it to the blue. So it's kind of uh, acceptable for that. To see that is acceptable or not, if I back to there and you can see the manage term, you will see that actually my term is here now. So now in my organization, anyone use Royal means the customer is the average ticket count is less than one. So actually you teach your Q&A about specific term. Another use case of that is, uh, for example, uh, in our data set, uh, let me show the data that we have. We have a, a value named con, uh, continent and also the company. So sometimes you in your organization, they didn't call it as a continent. They uh, kind of call it as a region or the branch, and that can be a com kind of uh, difference. So, for example, they said that show me um, not the sales price, but that or rating. Uh, sorry about my typo. Rating by branch. And I said branch, and again, it gives me an error that, hey, I don't know what you mean about branch. And I say, I can teach you. Going to the teach QA, what is the branch? And here, I can say, okay, this one is actually, you see that I have a different one because it's not. Adjective is not going to define a column. It's a specific actually difference. So I said that is refer to continent. So when so we define some synonyms. So for the continent, actually I said okay. People says uh, branch means I mean continent because it's a normal things that we have there. And it's going to apply that one. Close it and it's going to apply. And now is actually should know that set as, for example, as a as a map or something like that. Yeah, or as a for example, so maybe better. Okay, so you can actually use that one and say. So you think you can actually define the terms of a here. Also, there is a possibility that you already define some question. You already have some question in your Power BI service. You define them, you can come review them and manage the terms over there. That's also possible. So that's a kind of the really interesting. If you want to define some general questions, so you remember that when you double click here, there are some predefined questions coming here. You can uh, generate yourself. So you can say, OK, beside that, I want to also ask this question as a default one. So you can define here. So uh, behind the scene again here, we have some NLP, natural language processing. Um, behind the scene that using that one. I'm going to save it. So uh, about all of them, if you just go to the uh, if you just go to the Radha cut, 
alter Layla. I just want to just go to the radacat.com alter Layla. I have uh, lots of, uh, I have all of these. Actually, I write blog posts about them. So if you're interested, you can go on there. Uh, they are not in because I wrote about other things, but uh, you can see most of them here. So I didn't list them, just uh, just go to the radacat.com and you can find all of the things that I actually I talk about them there. And also uh, this is my uh, email and Twitter handle. So if you have any question, I more than I'm sorry, I'm more than happy to be answer over there. So this is a very general about the all of the AI visual we have. We have other AI visual there, so you can create your own R and Python over there. Uh, that's also really easy. Uh, the challenge is about the package management with R and Python. Uh, you can easily use them, but sometimes problems. So for example, for example, uh, if I use R. Uh, is actually you will see I access to the R scripts editor and I able to write my code here. So for example, I want to create so program about tenure. I'm going to run it. So you should have an R machine behind the scene to run. I think there is a problem with my R happened about yesterday. I didn't. Check it. I hope that's not that. Oh yeah, it's actually showing that. So you can write your R language and everything. There are some visuals that's not covered inside Power BI, or if you look at the gallery, you can you couldn't see them. You can actually write it here, and you can kind of bring him here and see that. Or for example, about. Um, you can change it easily by exploit. I have a book actually on that so you can see how it work. Uh, there's I'm saying that it's good. You can write any code here. There is a problem with the R and Python. That's I can call it is a major problem that you can when you publish it, you can publish it to the uh, service and it's just available for personal gateway. So if, if you have an organizational gateway, it doesn't work and it doesn't work because of the some security issue because with R and Python, you can do anything. You can write it back to the SQL and everything. So that's a challenge that Power BI team has um, the kind of security problem. So they couldn't allow to be as an organizational one. So uh, still you can use it. I have a book on that, but uh, just be careful about that. So you can use it as a personal gateway, but not in the organization level. So I think I have about 10 minutes to answer questions. So yes, please, if you have any question. Wow, awesome. Interesting. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much, Leila. I was blown away. As in, I've never seen somebody use key influencer <laughs> like that. that <laughs> right, so people just use key influencer, they just drop data, look at the inside, but you really go in depth for us, and I'm sure everybody understand. And thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much for that. We really appreciate, and we are going to bring you back to Africa very, very soon. I promise you that we are bringing you back very soon. So let me check uh, the Q and A, and let's see what people have for us. And uh, we go to Q and A section. Um, let me just let me also down. bring it here myself. Okay, yep. Okay, so somebody said uh, this is interesting. Thanks a lot, Lila. Okay, thank Another you. Person. <laughs> Sharing the file would be interesting, Lila. Thanks a lot. So, um, Great. people are saying if you can share the file with them so they can just practice. Yes, yeah, sure. I, I will send it the file and also the related data set so you can kind of match them. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Right. Thank you so much. So another person said we appreciate if you can share the blog post as well. Okay. This is very interesting in profile. Okay. Okay. Sure. So you can do a post about you can do a blog about it about um, key influencers. I think you have a blog about it already. Did you? Yeah, yeah, I have about all of them. I have a blog, so I will uh, I will add a, a new page here and I will add all of the blog posts and video okay. about them. Sure. All right, so thank you. Another person, let me see. Is it possible to increase or reduce the numbers of bars in decomposition tree? So reduce the number of the bars. Yes, there is a possibility. 
that's a good one. So uh, there is, uh, for example, here uh, there is a actually yes under the tree. Uh, you can says here if you look at here, you can identify the maximum of the bar to be show. So I said I just want to show five one. So at the same time, it just shows five, but you can scroll and see the other. So that's one thing. <laughs> Hope he's awesome. I think that's a very good question. Yeah. Thank so uh, another question. Can I use Q and A with another language? Yeah, not yet. <laughs> Hope so they kind of bring it. Uh, some of other AI things like text analytics and the other support other languages, but this one as I check the tutorial, no. Not yet. Maybe I need to. Maybe some features added, but as I know, no, not yet. Unfortunately, hope hope soon. Yeah, hope so too. But I'm sure it's not yet. But as a trick we use here in Nigeria, so I think I work on a project uh, project like uh, around last year. So the trick that we normally use for this question, this particular question that you just asked, is synonyms in your data model. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yes, yes, that, that's that's kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yes, it's a right. trick. You can just yeah. change the synopsis of uh, those uh, tests and the likes, then you can now hacks in another language, right? Yes. Okay, I think that makes sense. Yeah, so you can explore that synonyms in the data model, or we should be waiting for Power BI to release uh, any other language that you want. And I'm sure Power BI is, they are actually doing the update every month and they will just put up something interesting very soon, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Laila. We would love to have you again in Africa soon. So somebody said we love. Hmm? <laughs> okay, another another comment. Hi, Laila. I would like to see you here again talking about AI in oh, Power Apps. Yes, sure. Yeah, yes, yes. I have uh, I have many sessions about AI builders. So yes, of course. Yeah, I'm more than happy. Yeah. Okay, so Laila said she's happy, and I'm, I'm sure <laughs> she's coming back very soon to talk about Power Apps. Maybe when next we are bringing you Lila to be on the AI in Power Hubs. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, next one. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you so much. So another comment. Thanks, Lila. Some of the futures I've yet I'm here to explore. Thanks for pointing out hidden gems in the visual. Okay, that's another thank you. Uh -huh. okay. Somebody even mentioned Spanish. Okay, so Spanish is I think yeah, Spanish is available on Power BI service as well. Oh, right? maybe, Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, so somebody yeah, said, buy, can, yes. Hmm. Hmm, somebody said you can use Spanish for the Q&A, and I think I saw something like that in the Power BI service. Okay, I didn't know that. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't check that one. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so, so much. Thank you very much for having I think that's all question from uh, comment from our people. So thank you very much for having you here, Laila. We really appreciate you coming and then uh, we on, the, on behalf of uh, everybody in the Nigeria Power Platform community, we are saying a very big thanks to you. And I'm sure when we call you next time, you will actually come back and give us some of your awesome and interesting knowledge. Yeah. Thank you. I'm more than happy. Thank you. Thanks so much. And yeah, thanks so much, everyone, for the great comments. And thanks so much. And hope we see you in person, some in Africa, in Nigeria, and other. Yeah. Hope soon. <laughs> After we come up with a kind of cope with COVID-19, we can travel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please, do you have any, um, maybe anything in mind of coming to Nigeria very soon? Sure, thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, so I'm saying that, did, did you have any plan of coming to Nigeria? Anything? Uh, I love yeah, yeah, I love to. So uh, as soon as kind of we can travel, so definitely we have lots of destinations that we want to travel. So yeah, why not? Wow. Wow. In fact, I would love to welcome you here in Nigeria. <laughs> then <laughs> about the AI uh, meetup and bootcamp that you suggested too, we definitely work on that in our community in Africa and in Nigeria as large. So I'll get back to you on that. So thank you very much, everyone. If you have any other question, we have just six minutes to close this section. You can kindly drop it in chat. Then I've dropped a link in the chat. Please kindly view the evaluation for this session and then rate our speaker, Laila. Well, I'm sure she's going to have 100%. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> so, I just put, I try to put the links, things in here. So yeah.
can change so it. Chats for us, clearly. Okay, so you can just drop the links in the Q&A section. Yeah, I will put there. Yeah, sure. Just open them very fast and put it there. I can put it in the Power BI one, so I share everything then with you, so you can share with them. Okay. Right. Just try to. <laughs> Mm. We have like two questions for you, and then maybe you can take that quickly. We have two more questions. It is possible to use AI with direct query? Oh yes, yes, there is no difference. Yeah. And also, can I use the composition to show the year of on year cost of the Parker say spent on computers for the past three years? Um. So uh, it's actually you should create that one on your actually measures or in your column first and then bring it here. But yes, if you just create your calculation, yes, why not? You can use it there, but uh, it's not that much a smart like a DAX code that able to detect that. So you should write it yourself that one. But yes, yes it can be used that one. OK, so I think that's awesome and that's a very great question. So thank you so much, Laila. And then we are going to end the session in then I think we have just three minutes to go. So if you have any more questions before the three minutes, please drop your question in chat. We'll be, we'll be happy to just answer your question. So we have three minutes. Drop your question in chat. Yes, I meantime, I will put the link here so everyone can see that one. Any question? Not yet. So, so I just put it that one. Key influencer order. So I think I put everything on the chat. I will share this file with you. So actually, please share it with the community. So cool. So that's one. Save. And also the Microsoft things, actually, the Microsoft uh, one is also really good. The Microsoft article is about uh, key influencer and the other. So I'm going to kind of zip this one and I will email the all of the actually uh, everything here. Thank you so much. Do it now. Add to archive. Cool. Perfect. So, yep, I will ready and I will share it, that one with you. So, cool. Uh, so, I think someone is trying to ask a question. I think the question is uh, which PAR platform we use share documentations. Is there documentation in PAR platform that somebody can just go and read? Yeah. Oh, uh, you mean the, uh, the blog post, you mean? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Oh, it's yes. actually it's, uh, under Radakat. Yes, I think Radakak is interesting. I've what I've read a lot of blog on your on your website. I read a lot of blog posts on Radakak. So, yeah, so, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I and Reza write blog posts. These days, Reza is more active than me, so he has lots of Power BI. I mainly cover the AI part, so he's also more in other Power BI parts. I mainly focus on visualization and AI. He mainly mm -hmm. focuses on other part. So if you they go to the Radakak. And uh, there's articles. They just click on articles, and they can find things. So from everything, from security, yeah, everything <laughs> you can find the like posts, <laughs> and also books. You have some free books also there. Uh, that actually uh, some of them are free. So some of them, uh, uh, Rocky to Rocket Star is a free one, and also some of the published one that actually exists there. So yeah. OK, so make sense. So I think we'll love to bring Reza very soon. And yes. maybe a book for us. So maybe we are bringing him very soon. We are bringing <laughs> him. Come and share experience in Power BI. Oh, that's great. Thank you. So I just shared the link over here so everyone can see the blog post. So yeah, cool. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Laila. So Thank we have you. 30 seconds to go. Did anybody have any question before the 30 seconds? Okay, so um, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I think this comes to the end of the session. I um, really appreciate you for joining us for this in one hour interesting session on an overview of AI visuals in Power BI. And I'm sure you really enjoyed the session with Leila Etakti. So thank you so much, Leila, and we really appreciate you. On behalf of all the community in Africa and Nigeria, we are saying thank you. And then uh, thank you everyone for joining us as well. Our next uh, Power of Saturday will be coming up soon. In, uh, let me say like third week of July. And we'll be happy to see you guys again as well. Thank you so much for coming and really appreciate. Bye-bye. Thank you. If you like to say bye to everyone, just to say bye-bye to everyone. Thank you. Have a great day. And thanks so much for joining for this session. And have a good day. Thank you. Yeah, have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a good day.